everyone, my name is Samantha Robinson. I'm a consignment director of decorative arts and design at Heritage Auctions. But before that, long before that, as I was putting myself through my master's, um, I was a server at a well-known cocktail bar here in Dallas uh, called Victor Tango's. Uh, and today we are in my home bar where I am a regular. This is Tiny Victories in the neighborhood of Oak Cliff. Uh, and you'll see here, I was the fifth individual to drink every single cocktail on the menu. Not in one sitting, in about a month's time, uh, but that's uh, my trophy. And um, I'm joined here with my friend. Hi, I'm Jeremy Elliott. I'm a bartender here at Tiny Victories. Sam, it's good to yeah. see you. Yeah, it's good to see you too. Hello. Uh, and so we're here today to do a couple of things. Uh, one, we're going to introduce some of the highlights from the Phil and Gretchen Arth collection of cocktail wear. This is a private collection that came out of Morag, California. Uh, an absolutely incredible man and collector who spent decades scouring eBay and other shops for these incredible items. He acquired 400 pieces in total. And so we have 98 lots. Uh, that's coming up in our July 15th signature design auction. Jeremy's the spirit expert, the cocktail expert. So we just kind of tried to look at the cocktail shaker, the theme, the period, and match it with a shaken cocktail, only shaken cocktails. I'm so sorry for you whiskey fans that like your stirred cocktails, but only shaken for today. And um, we have a couple of great matchups for you. And we're gonna start with this piece here. This is the first lot in that section from the auction. By the time that this vessel is made by the premier luxury brand in the US, Tiffany & Company, this is made in 1889, cocktails have really hit their stride. And it is beautifully acid etched with this uh, decor here, and then as well as a hunting scene. And unlike uh, modern cocktail shakers that you'll see with a cap, this one does not have a cap. And once it's pulled, this reveals the strainer which is built in inside. It's an absolutely exquisite example of a very early cocktail shaker. So. Jeremy has a cocktail that he has in mind to pair with this shaker. So we were talking about like the kind of cocktails coming into their own in the, in the late 19th century. And so a sherry cobbler is like a classic, um, really wonderful cocktail that's indicative of the time what people would be drinking at that time. So we won't be mixing it in this. No, we will not be using this. <laughs> so the dope thing about sherry is that um, it's a fortified wine, essentially. And so what we'll do is like almost a riff on a sherry cobbler. So instead of using sherry, we're going to use uh, Lily Blanc. Lily Blanc's uh, like a fortified white wine. So in the same family, same style. So these are really, really simple, yummy cocktails that were served over crushed ice. Um, usually incorporated some kind of fruit as well, or, or sweetener. So we have a little bit of Lille, a little bit of like strawberry puree. Yeah, a little crushed ice for dilution. Just to get some dilution and stuff. A little more crushed ice. Crushed ice is pretty prevalently used. Um, it's easy to work with, and it really like does a good job of adding dilution and chilling down the cocktail. You know, because like pre air conditioning and refrigeration, like nice yummy cold cocktail stuff. So. Um, the garnish will do like a little. Put a mint spray. And usually you'll see like some berries. Pretty cute. A little bit of powdered sugar too. And there you have it. This is the cobbler paired with our Tiffany and Company silver shaker. And this at the time in 1889 would have been just the all the rage. The ice would have been something that was just now becoming more common for the average American. The straw was a new invention, so this would have been Absolutely incredible. Yeah, super young. Thanks, Jeremy. So our next selection from the auction is a really whimsical cocktail shaker set here. And cocktail shakers really begin to boom during Prohibition, which started in January 1920. And uh, the first cocktail shakers, because spirits and alcohol were banned, um, cocktail shakers were in sort of hidden forms. Uh, so you'd see cocktail shakers in the forms of teapots or in the form of a trophy. Uh, and then near the end of Prohibition, this is produced circa 1928. Prohibition uh, begins in 1920, ends in 1933. So by the end, uh, people are really accepting that the cocktail shaker is just a part of what you have in your home. 
and we have whimsical forms that riff on the word cocktail, so rooster forms. And there's many other different types of cocktail shakers that you'll see in the auction. Lighthouses, dumbbells, uh, lanterns, fire extinguishers, etc. So we wanted to share uh, for this cocktail shaker a very popular drink during the Prohibition era, and Jeremy will mix that up for us. Well, yeah, so this is a uh, bee's knees. Um, it's a classic cocktail. They're super yummy, super simple, and it's very indicative of a traditional sour. So um, three ingredients, you know, you have your spirit, you have a sweetener, and you have a form of citrus for your acid, your sour. So this one uses um, gin, usually like, traditionally you would use like a lemon dry gin, um, a little bit of honey syrup, and lemon juice, and it's served up in a nice cold coop. So super refreshing, super simple, very indicative of what people would be drinking at the time. So. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, as Jeremy's mixing this up, really in the 1920s, 1930s, this is when tea time or coffee time turns into cocktail hour. And Americans begin to entertain in their home uh, and invite their, their friends over for drinks. Uh, it was not just the speakeasy, although Americans were really knocking and banging on the door of the speakeasies as well. Um, but this would have been a type of drink that, you know, you might entertain your friends. Uh, mixed up in this cocktail shaker here very whimsical again and it does pour out of the beak which is very fun so um, you know and as you see, can see there's a lot of sets that are included in the auction as well so sets that include the shaker multiple cups four six or eight and then the tray so it really is um, a group experience So next up, we have an expression of how cocktails took over the globe. So the U.S. was in prohibition in 1928, but the rest of the world was not. So places like France and Germany were really taking cocktails and making them their own. And a German manufacturer called J.A. Henkels, which still exists to this day, in 1928 was producing these incredible um, airplane and Zeppelin form cocktail shakers, but they weren't just cocktail shakers. Every single piece practically in this and many others that are contained inside um, have a function. So the wings are flasks, uh, there's other flasks and containers for sugar, for fruit, etc. inside and also cups. So um, this is just an incredible expression of how the cocktail took over the world. Uh, but it also says something about transportation in that moment and the kind of fervor for air travel um, during the interwar periods. And there's even a cocktail um, called the Aviation. Called the Aviation. Correct. It's a, it's a classic cocktail and addictive to that, once again, addictive to that period. Um, super yummy, super delicious. Another uh, sensation of a, a sour. So nice and bright and refreshing. So a little bit of gin. And then uh, Primitive Villa, which is like a violet liqueur. A nice, beautiful color, and nice sweet. A little bit of that. And then a really interesting, wonderful ingredient. This is Luxardo Maraschino liqueur. Um, it's a cherry liqueur. People think like sweet cherry, but it's actually like dry cherry. So it's a really, sure. really important part of this cocktail. And a lot of, a lot of classic cocktails and cocktails in that time period. Like you'll see a lot of recipes that call for Luxardo Maraschino. Liqueur. Right, and we'll see this ingredient again in a little while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely making a comeback today. And last up. And then a little, a little lemon juice, because you need, you got your sweet, like we talked about before, you got your sweet and your spirit, and you need a little bit of acid to balance up the thing. Right. So, the key ingredient here being water or diluted ice, so he shakes. Every cocktail will be shaken. And if someone makes this at home, the aviation or bee's knees or any of these other shaking cocktails, what's your advice for the, the execution? I would say uh, make sure that you're shaking long enough and it gets nice and cold and you're getting enough dilution. Um, that's 
because you want to have a cocktail that's it's a little bit too strong. Mm -hmm. People don't realize that water is a huge, huge part of making a cocktail like balance and palatable and stuff like that, bringing that maybe to be down. So make sure you're shaking it enough. And I would say like 10, 10 seconds. Okay. Make sure it's nice and cold. If you don't the time it like a, like a bartender, you can always kind of feel the shaker and it gets pretty cold and like- So do you, you don't count? No, no. Just, I would, it's by feel. Yeah, I've been doing it for long enough. It's by feel, so. <laughs> kind of, you know. And then the garnish is just some some yummy. Yeah, that looks delicious. Oh, yeah. Well, this is one of my favorites, so oh, yeah. I'm gonna try one. I love how dry, bright, citrusy that is. You can just imagine someone jetting off in a plane in the 20s. Enjoy that. Yeah. With one of these. Love. Yeah. yeah. So by the mid 30s, prohibition has ended, and some of the most famous designers, industrial designers, product designers, uh, get into the cocktail shaker game. Norman Belgettis is an American industrial designer who founded his own industrial design studio in 1927 and produced this cocktail shaker set called the Manhattan Set, inspired by the New York City skyline for Revere Brass and Copper. And uh, it really shows streamlined design of the 1930s, uh, the strong verticals, the ribs down the body of the shaker, um, the circular elements, uh, all sort of embracing, uh, again, fast streamlined design. And so we wanted to come up with a cocktail, shaken cocktail to pair with this. What do we have? Oh, so we're gonna do another classic, um, the last word. The last words are, are really, really delicious, dope cocktails. Um, so in that addictive of that um, style of a sour, so you'd be using a shaker to, to make this cocktail. Uh, the ingredient list yeah. is really interesting. If you look at it, it's like a Luxardo Maracino Core, which you use earlier on the aviation. Sure. Um, a little bit of lime juice. It uses green chartreuse, which is a really interesting liqueur. It's actually like really high improved. It's like 55% ABV and then yeah. a little bit of gin. And so when you see all those ingredients, it kind of looks really weird, but the cocktail comes out like super beautiful. Beautiful color, beautiful taste. Yeah. Like yeah. One of our favorites. We were talking about this, this drink. And this is one of those drinks that um, was kind of it's kind of considered the last of the pre-prohibition drinks, uh, but it just really packs a punch, and we wanted to pair that with this cocktail shaker just because, you know, um, we needed something strong. So so far, what do we have? So we got a little bit of gin, um, lime juice, a little salt, romaine, you know, pour again, dry, yummy cherry and a little bit of green chartreuse. This is that interesting liqueur I told you that's like really, really high in proof. Mm -hmm. And it's a really pretty color and so too. Herbaceous. Um, yeah, very herbaceous, absolutely like alpine. Um, yep. Tasty notes and stuff, so. Okay, I'm gonna shake, shake till it's cold. we have the Manhattan set, this cocktail has a connection to Detroit, um, which was another American city really taking off in the early 20th century. So, um, and has a huge connection also to obviously prohibition, speakeasies, uh, a lot of mob activity at that time. So you try this last word? I will. Wow. Yeah, incredibly spirit forward, um, herbaceous, flavorful, powerful drink, but everything really comes together. It's, it's beautiful. Thank you. So lastly, we wanted to bring a little bit of color into the equation. These are the master in color shakers made in England in the 30s. We are going to be presenting one of each color. So this ivory color, red, orange, also green, blue, and black. And we're also gonna just take this opportunity to talk a little bit about how classic cocktails have survived to this moment and how bartenders are sort of making them their own today. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, before we kind of, most of the cocktails we kind of featured have been really, really grounded in like classics. But the one beautiful thing about classic cocktails is they can always do like slight riffs on their build and construction to do something new. Um, sure. So that, because these pieces look so modern, even though they're, they're beautiful older pieces, they're super modern, like something you could pick up today. Yeah. Um, we'll do a pretty modern cocktail called Naked and Famous. All right. So what's in the Naked and Famous? Um, it's an e a cocktail that incorporates uh, equal parts for all of its ingredients. Mm -hmm. But uh, one of the main ones is uh, mezcal. Um, mezcal yeah. is super, super popular. 
right now? Right now, we didn't really see it during Jerry Thomas no, area no, era no, of no, the no, 1860s, no, no, no. but Hideaway, today, Mexico, yeah. yeah, today we do. And then a little bit of lemon juice. Dealing with shakers still, so you know we talked about right. base spirits, sweeteners, and and, uh, and citrus. Uh, a spirit that people are pretty familiar with, like we've got like an Aperol spritz, it's Aperol, so it's like a slightly bitter orange aperitif. Super, super yummy. Yeah. Okay. Yellow chartreuse, which is um, cousin to the green chartreuse, so the proof is a little bit lower, but it's more like floral, like uh, flowers and like citrus. And, not as know, aggressive? Not as aggressive. As the green chartreuse? Yeah. Okay. This looks delicious so far. Super pretty color. Okay. So I'm gonna face up. I feel like I'm doing this wrong. You're all good. Over my left, right or left? By feel. Right? Yep. Perfect. We're good? Yeah. I'll let you do the rest. I'm so honored. <laughs> Don't tell the owner of the bar. Don't tell Ryan. That's delicious. Wow. Look at that color. Okay. Hold up. And this is a new cocktail for me, so I, I don't know what to expect. Jeremy Elliott bringing cocktails into 2021. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you for joining Jeremy and I for cocktail hour. Uh, thank you for checking out some of the highlights in our design auction on July 15th. Don't forget to go to ha.com to view the lots and to bid. And I'll see you at the auction. I'll be on the podium. I think Jeremy's going to be in the audience. Yeah, I'm, I'm planning on planning on showing up. I'm like really excited. He's going to be waving his bitter paddle around. I just know it. Uh, but thanks so much for joining us, and uh, thanks to the entire team at Tiny Victories for allowing us to film here. And, Absolutely. Um, if, you're, if you're in Oak Cliff, please come stop by Tiny Victories and, and have a cocktail. With you. And tell them what you have coming up. Oh, so um, also um, I'm a Dallas native, and um, actually opening a bar with me and my partners in the design district uh, called Double D's, and so I'll be coming shortly in the fall. So excited about that too. I'll be at I'll be at that bar, my new home bar. Love. <laughs> and cheers. Cheers.